Physiology SAQ 18, Coronary Blood Flow A. Explain how coronary blood flow is maintained during episodes of hypotension. Important equations. Left coronary artery flow rate equals percentage of diastolic time throughout cardiac cycle times aortic pressure minus LV EDP divided by resistance. Right coronary artery flow rate during systole is aortic pressure minus RVSP divided by resistance and during diastole, AOP minus CVP divided by resistance. Coronary vascular resistance equals 8 times length times viscosity divided by pi times radius to the power of 4. Coronary blood flow is maintained during hypotension via increased coronary vessel radius, via myogenic autoregulation, metabolic autoregulation, and beta-2 mediated vasodilation. Myogenic autoregulation, during reduced aortic pressure, there is reduced coronary artery stretch, and this leads to reflex vasodilation. The autoregulatory range is between coronary perfusion pressure of 60 to 180 mmHg. Metabolic autoregulation occurs when there is increased myocardial oxygen consumption, leading to increased PCO2, hydrogen ions, potassium ions, adenosine and lactate production, which leads to increased nitric oxide secretion and vasodilation. This overrides sympathetic mediated vasoconstriction. During hypovolemia, there is baroreceptor reflex and increased sympathetic tone, leading to increased adrenaline and beta-2 adrenoceptor mediated vasodilation. Second mechanism is increased aortic pressure. Hypovolemia leads to baroreceptor reflex and sympathetic tone increases along with renin angiotensin aldosterone system activation. This leads to increased venous return via redistribution of blood flow from non-essential organs to the heart and contractility increases which leads to increased aortic pressure. Other mechanisms include reduced LV EDP due to hypovolemia leading to reduced venous return, reduced right ventricular EDP which occurs by the same mechanism, and reduced right ventricular systolic pressure which is due to hypovolemia leading to reduced venous return, reduced right ventricular and diastolic volume and pressure. If hypotension is due to blood loss, reduced hematocrit leads to reduced blood viscosity, reduced resistance and increased blood flow. B. Briefly compare the coronary perfusion pressure in the left and right endocardium in the two phases of the cardiac cycle. Blood flow for both the coronary arteries are from the aorta, with the aortic root pressure as the driving pressure for perfusion. Both the right and left endocardium experience a difference in pressure, whereby the right endocardium is exposed to a systolic and diastolic pressure of around 25 and 5 mm mercury respectively. The left endocardium is exposed to a systolic and diastolic pressure of around 120 and 5 mm mercury respectively. Both coronary arteries have a difference in coronary perfusion pressure, which is derived from the equation coronary perfusion pressure equals aortic root pressure minus intraventricular pressure or left or right atrial pressure or venous system pressure, whichever is higher. For the left coronary perfusion pressure, it ranges from 0 to 75 mm mercury. During ventricular systole, coronary perfusion pressure equals aortic systolic pressure minus intraventricular pressure in the left ventricle, which equals 120 minus 120, which equals 0 mm mercury. During left ventricular diastole, coronary perfusion pressure equals aortic root pressure minus right atrial pressure, which equals to 80 minus 5, which equals 75 mm mercury. The right coronary perfusion pressure ranges from 95 mm mercury during right ventricular systole and 75 mm mercury during right ventricular diastole. During right ventricular systole, coronary perfusion pressure equals aortic systolic pressure minus intraventricular pressure in the right ventricle which equals 120 minus 25, which equals 95 mmHg. During right ventricular diastole, coronary perfusion pressure equals aortic root pressure 
minus intraventricular pressure in the right ventricle, which equals 80 minus 5, equals 75 mmHg. Coronary perfusion pressure is not the only determinant of coronary blood flow, as flow equals difference in pressure across a vessel divided by vascular resistance. C. Explain how a patient with aortic stenosis has a high risk of myocardial ischemia. Aortic stenosis refers to narrowing of aortic valve orifice, which may be due to degenerative, rheumatic heart disease or bicuspid aortic valve. With reduced left ventricular outflow tract radius, there is increased resistance to flow and high afterload state. A patient with aortic stenosis has high risk of myocardial ischemia due to imbalance between myocardial oxygen supply and demand. Factors causing reduced myocardial oxygen supply in aortic stenosis Factors causing reduced left ventricle delivery of oxygen includes reduced diastolic time. Aortic stenosis leads to left atrial enlargement, risk of AF and tachycardia. Atrial kick is more important for the non-compliant left ventricle, which hypertrophies due to aortic stenosis. Reduced aortic pressure. Increased jet velocity leads to reduced potential energy based on Bernoulli's principle. This leads to reduced aortic root pressure and coronary perfusion pressure. This is exacerbated by hypovolemia and vasodilation, for example due to neuraxial block. Next is increased LVEDP. Aortic stenosis leads to left ventricular hypertrophy, increased stiffness, and diastolic failure with increased filling pressures, which leads to reduced coronary perfusion pressure. Increased vessel length. Aortic stenosis leads to left ventricular hypertrophy with increased coronary vessel length, increased coronary vascular resistance, and reduced coronary blood flow. Tachycardia reduces diastolic time and coronary blood flow. Tachycardia may be due to reduced cardiac output due to aortic stenosis, which leads to compensatory tachycardia, which will further decrease diastolic time and coronary perfusion. Factors causing reduced right ventricular delivery of oxygen reduced aortic root pressure as above, increased right ventricular systolic pressure due to secondary pulmonary hypertension. If severe, this may prevent flow in systole. Increased CVP. Aortic stenosis leads to pulmonary hypertension and right ventricular failure. Increased CVP leads to reduced coronary perfusion pressure. This is exacerbated by positive pressure ventilation, PEEP and pneumoperitoneum. Factors causing increased myocardial oxygen demand in aortic stenosis. Number one, increased wall tension. Global tension equals pressure times radius divided by two. Individual fiber tension is proportional to pressure times radius divided by thickness. In aortic stenosis, there is increased afterload. This leads to increased left ventricular pressure, increased wall tension, and increased myocardial oxygen consumption. In LV failure due to aortic stenosis, there is left ventricular dilation, which increases the radius of the left ventricle, which leads to increased wall tension and myocardial oxygen consumption. Second reason is increased basal oxygen consumption, as aortic stenosis leads to left ventricular hypertrophy, and increased myocardial mass increases myocardial oxygen consumption. Next reason is increased heart rate. There is increased risk of atrial fibrillation and tachycardia during aortic stenosis which leads to increased myocardial oxygen demand. Last is increased stroke work. Aortic stenosis leads to increased afterload due to outflow tract narrowing which increases pressure work and myocardial oxygen consumption. Thank you.